This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay, good afternoon, Rabbi Isai. Erev Shabbos, Parshas Nitzav and Vayelech. As we prepare for Shabbos and for the Yom Adin Habaleinu Lataiva, there was a woman who lived in the city of Shunem. And this woman would host the Navi Elisha whenever Elisha had the need to be in that city. In fact, the woman built Elisha a special alias kir, special attic, attic, and she added on the floor to her home so that Elisha should be able to stay there and she should be able to have the privilege of hosting this navi. And she the was pasuk, not Jewish, was she? Yeah, she was. Definitely. Okay. And the pasuk tells us in Malachim Beis Parak Dalid Pasuk Yer Aleph Vayehi Hayoyim, the day came, Vayavo Yishama. And she came to her house. Vayasar el hoaliyah vayishkav shama. And Elisha went into his room and he went to sleep there. And in the morning Elisha wakes up. He's so grateful to the woman that she provided for his needs in this way. That she made him his own quarters. That Elisha calls his attendant. Who's Elisha's attendant? Gehazi. He said, Gehazi, do me a favor. Call the woman and ask her the following. You look over there in Pasuk Yud Gimel. Hine charadet elenu es kol hacharad hazois. What? Now we're not up to the hand. Now I'm giving you the introduction. And you went through all of this trouble. Hine charadet elenu es hacharad hazois. You went through all of this trouble for us. Malasos lach. What can we do for you? In other words, thank you very much. Whatever you want, we'll do it for you. And Elisha tells Gechaz, he asks her, Hayesh lo daber lechal hamelach. Do you need us to speak to the king on your behalf? In other words, maybe you have a parking ticket you need to get off, right? Maybe we could speak to the governor. Maybe we could speak to the king. And she says, Vatoimer, remember what she said? She says, No! ami anoichi yoshaves. I dwell among my people. I need absolutely nothing. Very mysterious story. Because... If you look in the following psukim, we find out that the Isha Hashunamis has no children. The Tzaddik, the God other is saying, you need anything? I'll give it to you, I'll daven for you. She does need something. She needs Elisha to daven for her. And yet she says, no. Besoich ami anoichi yoishavas. And even more startling is what the Zayar says on this story. The Zayar in Parshas Naya says... When it says, It was the day, right? If you were there on Monday. The word in Tanakh, Hayoim, refers to what day of the calendar? Rosh Hashanah. Like we find, Atem, Nitzavim, Hayoim, Kulchem. This week's passion. So it says the Zayah was Rosh Hashanah. It's Rosh Hashanah. It's the time that God is reviewing everyone's account. Sorrow was Nifgad on Rosh Hashanah. The woman needs a child. The tzaddik is saying, whatever you want, I'll ask the Rebbe I'll ask the king. And she says, no, I don't want anything. I dwell among the people. It's a very uh, difficult episode. No, I don't want anything. I dwell among, don't mention me. So as we stand, you know, a few days before Rosh Hashanah, and, you know, everybody's looking into their masim. Everyone's thinking about their actions. They're trying to do tshuva. And we only have a few days to go. So we're looking for a shortcut. We want a shortcut. Is there any way to get a good din without doing tshuva? We try to do tshuva. We try our best. But are there any shortcuts? I'm going to give you a shortcut. The shortcut is, Besoich ami anoichi yoshavas. Listen to the words of the Zayar. Okay? Says the Zayar. That day, it was the Yom of Rosh Hashanah. And Hashem was judging the world. And when Elisha asked her, Do you need anything from the king? Who's the king? That's God. And especially in Rosh Hashanah, Hashem is the Melech. HaMelech HaKadosh, HaMelech HaMishpat. So what did she answer? The only thing she needs is for Elisha to go and ask God, please give me a child. Says the Zoyar, you know what the woman said? I don't want you to daven for me. That God should look at me separately 
Ella b'soich ami. I just want to hide among the crowd. I want to be among everyone else. Says Azayar, man da'ayo reisha bein ama. Someone who throws himself among the people. Lo yishkechun alei lameidin alei labish. God will not examine them to judge them unfavorably. In other words, says Azayar, on the Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah, if you're going to stand out, if you're going to stick out, Hashem says, oh, I see, I see among the crowd, I see this guy who's not part of the Yolam, not part of the Tzibor, Hashem is going to look very carefully at the Masim. But if you, so to speak, you could hide among the crowd. You could be among everybody else, and then Hashem says, you know, well, I, don't, I don't exactly see. Says Azayar, someone who is B'toich Ami, Someone who is among the people, the Rebbe Shalom does not judge them as carefully and does not scrutinize their ma'asim. It's very interesting. But what do you mean? Don't you want the tzaddik to daven for you? Isn't the tefillah of Elisha so powerful? Maybe he'll get you a child, says the Isha Shunamis. I'm better off not being looked at, not being examined, not being scrutinized, even better than the tzaddik davening for me. Says Reb Chaim Shmulevitz, Chaim Shlavet says in the Maimar Yud Ches in Tav Shin Lamed Gimel that as an individual, as a Yachid, there's no one who could stand up to Hashem's scrutiny. Everyone has Chatoim, everyone has Avoynois, in Sadik, Ba'aretz, Asher Yasa, Toiv, Layechta. The only Eitzah on the Yom Adin is to be among, among the Tzibor. Among the Tzibor. Because when you're a Yachid, you're limited by your personal circumstances. As a tzibor, the tzibor has a synergy, synergizes to become a unique entity and that offers a person protection. You know, the Ran says, the Ran when Moshe Rabbeinu said about Klai so Shimuna Hamoyrim, he said, listen up you rebels. So Moshe Rabbeinu was punished. Asked the Ran, why was he punished? They were rebels. What did he say that was wrong? They were a bunch of rebels. Says the Ran, yeah, Yankel was a rebel, and Beryl was a rebel, and Fival was a rebel, and this guy is a rebel. But as a Tzibor, the Tzibor is elevated to a status that rises above the petty faults of every individual. The Gemara in Krisa says on Avchavavam Be'om and Aleph, that on any Tainus, called Tainus, She'ein ba mi Poisha Yisrael ain't a Tainus. If you have a fast day, and you don't have the Rishayim come into the Shul, you didn't do the job. You're not yoy to the Tainus. Why not? Imagine you have a shul with 90 tzaddikim and you have 10 murderers. So if the mass murderers stay home, then it's not a tainus. But if the mass murderers come into the shul, then Hashem's makabal the tefillahs. What do we need the mass murderers for? Let them stay home. Let the 90 tzaddikim daven. The answer is, if not everybody shows up, you don't have a tzibor. You have a bunch, a collection of individuals. And a collection of individuals, no, no matter how great they are, they're just yechidim. But when you have Tzibor that stands for Tzadikim, Beinonim, Rishayim, now you have a Tzibor, now the Tzibor will be listened to. So when you dive in on Rosh Hashanah, you have to keep in mind, don't just think about yourself, your own problems, your own issues, your own health, your own children. You dive in for other people. You dive in for the Tzibor. You have to be part of the Tzibor. So I believe a very important way of being part of the Tzibor is by davening the Tzibor. Davening with a minion. Person davens in their living room, so what are they showing Hashem? Yeah, I'm, I'm a man, I'm an island unto myself. I believe a very big skula, a very big inyan, very important practice to adapt, to make sure we strengthen ourselves before Rosh Hashanah, is the inyan of Tefillah B'Tzibor. And like we saw in the Gemara today, that even though Tefillah B'Tzibor is only Mitzvah Drabbanon, it has the status of an Asei Doi Raisa, that, what? It can even push off an Isr Daraisa. So I have here on the sheet what the end of the Sefer Shmir Salashain. Chavetz Chaim wrote the Sefer Shmir Salashain about the importance of speech, but at the very end of the Sefer, the Chavetz Chaim provides us with 12 windfalls, with 12 jackpots, with 12 very powerful arguments about the importance of davening B'tzibor. And I would like to go through with you very briefly. What, what are these 12 benefits that accrue to a person who davens with a minion? And uh, hopefully this should be a schus for us, for the upcoming Yom Adin. The Chavetz Chaim writes, at the end of the Sefer, he calls this, Hisoyrus Gedoyla 
L'tfila b'tzibar. A big inspiration to daven with a minion. And this is the shit of Reb Lezer. You should write, spoke about Exactly. Exactly. Chavetz Chaim says, look what he writes. Hine, oh, everything here is from the Chavetz Chaim in the, the end of the Sefer Shemir Salashen. Chavetz Chaim writes, Hine ba'amnoseinu arabim, because of our many sins, heichelu anoshim bizmanenu lifroitz ha'anhoga ha'kadosha. People have begun to breach the holy practice. Shehoisa ad koi that Heretofore existed Eitzel Huma HaYisraelis that existed by Kla Yisrael Hamoin Ha'am Kulei. In other words, a hundred years ago, whether you're a Gadol Hadar or you're a regular Jew, a Pasha Yid, everyone davened with a minion three times a day. There's no, without exception. That was that's part of the culture. That's part of the That's who we were. Afilu Mishaloi Zachal Limen Atayra. Even if you didn't know Shas. The regimen, the, the ceremony of davening was widespread. Everyone woke up early in the morning, to daven the tzibor and to hear Kriya Satayra. The Chavetz Chaim goes on to say the downward spiral. How does the Yitzhahara get a person not to come to Shul? Well, he starts with Mincha Marav. Ah, oh, Mincha Marv, it's a Tuesday night, it's a long day, I'm tired, this and that. You start with Mincha Marv. And then after Mincha Marv, then even Sunday night Mincha Marv. And once Sunday night Mincha Marv goes, then even Marv Matzah Shabbos, you say to yourself, if I don't come to Marv Sunday, what's the difference between Marv Sunday and Marv Matzah Shabbos? Once Marv Matzah Shabbos, then Shachris on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. And there's no Kriya Satara anyway. So what's the difference between my living room and the shul? Once Tuesday, Wednesday goes. Monday, Thursday is out. Monday, Thursday is out. Sunday morning, you know, you're right, I'm off. But I don't go Tuesday. What's the difference between Tuesday and Sunday? And then Shabbos Mincha goes. And then Friday night goes. And then we have what we call Siyah on Yom Kippur. That's the downward spiral. See on Yom Kippur. See Says the Chafetz Chaim, I'm going to tell you 12 jackpots, 12 lotteries, 12 windfalls that come to someone who davens with a man. Number one. Ready? Drum roll, please. Number one. When you walk to shul, every step you take is another mitzvah. So what? Every step that you take is another mitzvah. Yeah, he's telling you not to take the car. Right? In other words, in other words like this. Let's say the shul is down the block. So let's say it takes a thousand steps to get to the shul. It's a thousand mitzvahs. Let's say the shul is four blocks away. It's four thousand mitzvahs. So let's times that by twice. Let's say you have Mincha Marav together. For eight thousand. Eight thousand chusam a day. Ten days, eighty thousand. A hundred days, eight hundred thousand. Over the course of the year, someone who davens with a minion is accruing millions of mitzvahs. And someone who's davening in his house, he lost out over the course of the year millions and millions and millions of footsteps. It's not a small thing. It's a very big thing. That's a very big thing. And you know, if you drive, so also you turn the ignition. That's a mitzvah. You turn right, that's a mitzvah. You turn left. You use high test gasoline. Right? Every ounce of gasoline is another mitzvah. You high paid high, high, high test. Right? And you find looking for parking is a mitzvah. And parking is a mitzvah. And walking out of the car, it's all a mitzvah. You're actually supposed to have it in the further shul from you. That's what the Gemara says. That's what the Gemara says to you. That's why you should have to increase your, your schar psiyos. That is number one. The big. One big union of davening in shul is you get schar for the footsteps. Number two, most people, when they come to shul, they learn epis ayyid shavet. You, you learn for at least, I don't know, 60 seconds. The rabbi says a dvar Torah, you read a halach and kitzur shulchan aruch, you read a mishnah, you say a pasuk. Okay, so let's say you learn for one minute. One minute, you can learn 200 words of Torah. Each word is... Can I get all 613? What's 200 times 613? Wow. 24. No, 13. 13. What's 200 times 613? 
120,000 mitzvahs. For one minute of learning, you get 120,000 mitzvahs. But when you stay home, when you dive in the bedroom, you lose out on the mi- minute of learning. So if you get 120,000 mitzvahs for being in the shul by hearing that one minute of Torah, over the course of the year, it's hundreds of millions of zechus that you lose out when you dive in the bedroom. Or in the living room. What? Yeah, you can hear less than Everyone is talking. So therefore, you're at home, you don't hear all that. So that's why it's a plug for my shi, Shadavan and Arshul. Okay. So number two, when you go to shul, and that's what the Chafetz Chaim is very against, people, oh, where are you Davin Marv? Oh, my neighbor is making a minion. Chafetz Chaim is not a fan of those kind of minyanim. Even in Avel, even in Avelos. Before you make your own minion, think twice. People go to shul, they learn something. You're going to make this guy lose out 120,000 mitzvahs, and what about 10 people? So you just made, you just caused the loss of over 1 million mitzvahs because you wanted to make your own minion. So think twice before you dive in, in you know, your friend's basement. Number three, another great, another great custom, another great windfall of someone who goes to shul. Very likely if you go to shul, your friend's going to see you coming to shul. Very likely, he's going to feel the pressure. I'm sure if you make sure to go to Minyan, at least one person will come because of you. So all the millions and billions of mitzvahs that he's doing goes to your credit. And the opposite, if you don't go, your friend says, oh, you know, his wife said, Hey, Shlomi, why are you going to Minyan? What do you mean, me? Beryl doesn't go to Minyan either. So you're going to be responsible for him not going. So that's another thing to think about. Number four, you ready for this? You probably never heard this before. Chazal say that Viradfu Mikem Chamisha Meya Umeya Mikem Ravava Yer Right, Mr. Bash, you're an accountant, no? Okay, you ready for this? <laughs> Five Jews could run after a hundred. What's the ratio? Twenty to one. That means one Jew could run after twenty. But Umeya Mikem Ravava Yer A hundred Jews could run after ten thousand. What's the ratio? Thousand to one. One to a hundred. So, uh, so the math doesn't work. One Jew could run after twenty, right? One Jew could run after how many? Five Jews could run after a hundred. That's one to twenty. But a hundred could run after ten thousand. That's one to a hundred. How do we understand this? Chazal say, In other words, yeah, five could only run after a hundred, but a hundred. Their collective synergy is so great they can run after 10,000. So if you put on your talus at home, it's only one person wearing talus. But if you go put on the talus with 10 people, that talus is now elevated to a level that you didn't have at home. You put on your tefillin at home, it's only one person. You put on the tefillin and shul, it's greatly enhanced. You say shema at home, it's only one. But you say shema and shul... It's not just 10 times. It be, takes on a level that you can't reach on your own. Every one of the hundreds of mitzvahs you're doing in shul is greatly enhanced in a way that you can't do at home. That is benefit number four. Benefit number five. Who here likes money? You like money? Yeah. Who here likes good health? Who here likes bracha? We all do. One of the things that Hashem rewards us, not only in Olam Haba, but in Olam Hazeh, is coming to Shul early and staying late. Elu Dvarim Shein Lahem Shur. Elu Dvarim Shein Lahem Shur. Hapeya. That'd be right. Elu Dvarim Shein Lahem Shur. Parasem Olam Hazeh. Ba'akeren Kayemus Olam Haba. Hashkamas. Beis. Hamedur Shachras. Avas. So anybody who wants to have a good life could come to Shul. That's all. Number five. Number six. The Gemara Bracha says, those who come to shul early, those who stay late, it's a school of four, Arich Yamim, long life. That's a good thing, I believe. <laughs> Number seven, who would like to have their tefillos answered? Yeah, we all want to have our tefillos answered. So Chazal say like this, that when you dive in by yourself, your tefillos are examined very carefully, very likely for your tefillos to be rejected. When you daven with a minion, it's always an ace rod sign, very likely for your tefillos to be answered. That's also quite a, uh, a wonderful 
a benefit that accrues to those who dive in Bitsiver. Okay. Wow. Who here would like to have all their sins forgiven? Sounds pretty good, right? As far as I know, there is no Amen Yeheshme Rabbas going on. Hey, come on. There's no Amen Yeheshme Rabbas going on in the living room. You can't, uh, you can't answer Amen Yeheshme Rabbas in your living room. Chazal say anyone who answers Amen Yeheshme Rabbas, Bechol Kavan Osai, Moichel and Loyal Kal Avay Noisav. Can't answer Amen Yeheshme Rabbas at home. When you say Kaddish, you say Kedusha, you're Mekayim a Mitzvah Doi Raisa of V'nekdashti B'soich B'nei Yisrael. Can't do that in the bedroom. When you answer Amen, you get Olam Haba. You, don't, you can't do that in the living room. When you say Baruch you make a crown for Hashem. Can't do that at home. Also, other benefits. Another benefit. Kriya Satayra. You know how many times we take the Sefer Torah out during the course of the year to Lane? Says the Maharil, 248 times. Okay. 200, yeah, you know how it could be? Because Maharil says so. <laughs> no, Monday, that's 50 Mondays a year. 50 no, Thursdays a year. 50 Shabbosim a year. 50 Minchas on Shabbos, that's already 200. That's right. Plus all the Yom and Tavim and Chanukah and Rosh Chodesh. 248. Oh. Yeah, 248. Wow. Each Kriya Satayra gives Kayach to another Aver. You don't want to miss one. You don't want to miss one. You need you need uh, both your kidneys. You need you need uh, all your avaram. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Rabbi Isai, every Christmas time in the olden days, Rabbi Isai, the people in the villages used to travel miles and miles and miles every Monday and Thursday. Says the Chavos we should be ashamed of ourselves. How in the olden days they would take long arduous trips to be able to hear Kriya Satayra. And here we have a shul, you know, half a block away. Chavetz Chaim says, another benefit. I don't have to go to shul, but of course I want my children to go, right? Of course they have to go, I'm exempt. But I want my kids to go, says the Chavetz Chaim. If you think your kids are going to go to shul, and you know the father is shluffing in bed, right? right? Think again. The chances are, not so good. Not, not so good. But I believe that above all of these benefits that we mentioned from the Chavetz Chaim, another very important benefit is what we said, B'soich Ami Anoichi Yoy Shabbos. And when it comes to the Yom Adin, person doesn't want to stick out. Person does not want to be scrutinized by themselves. Person wants to be Nivla B'toich HaKol. He wants to be among the people. Get lost in the crowd. The best way to get lost in the crowd is make sure you're always among the crowd. Make sure you're together with the tzibar. And perhaps that is what we can learn from the very first Pasuk in this week's parasha. Atem nitzavim, if you want to stand tall on what day of the year, hayoyim, then you know what you need to do, kolchem. You have to be together with everybody else. And if you're together with everybody else, then atem nitzavim, hayoyim, You'll be able to stand tall on the Yom Tov of Rosh Hashanah. We we'll should be zoicha. Shnas Chaim v'Shalom Lanu Elchal Yisrael. Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.